In case you weren't already aware, Fidelity is a great place to own index funds. Why do you ask? Well, Fidelity has two advantages over its counterpart, Vanguard. Fidelity definitely has the lowest expense ratios in the business, and they have no minimum required in initial investments into their index funds, which is a big deal for some beginner investors with Vanguard, who generally require a $3,000 minimum initial investment for most of their Admiral Shares index funds. Plus, you may already have a Fidelity brokerage or retirement account in which you want to own Fidelity investments. So in this video, I wanna share with you six different Fidelity index fund strategies for the average Joe, complete beginner investor out there so that you can grow your money, be financially free and retire the way you want to in the future. Let's get started. Hey guys, before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button below the video to ensure you do not miss any future videos I post. Make sure to leave a comment below saying you subscribed and I promise to respond personally to your comment. All right, let's go ahead and get started here with the very first Fidelity Index Fund investing strategy and that is what I call the single fund portfolio. You know, your investment portfolio does not need to be complicated and with Fidelity, you've got three great options here to have one specific investment in your portfolio and just set it and forget it over the long term. That's what this portfolio would be good for. Somebody who has a long time horizon for investing and ultimately they're okay with little bumps and bruises along the way as long as the trajectory is up over the long term. The first option available here is the Fidelity S&P 500 Index Fund, ticker symbol FXAIX. The S&P 500 Fund tracks the top 500 companies in the United States based on market capitalization. This fund has a current price per share of $130.68 and it has a $0 minimum initial investment, unlike Vanguard, which has a $3,000 minimum investment. Additionally, it's got an expense ratio of 0.015% compared to Vanguard, which is 0.04%. This fund was created in 1988. Year to date, it's up 0.39%. One year return is 18.4, three year is 14.17, five year return 15.21%, and 10 year return 13.87%. You can see here the top 10 holdings in this fund uh, represent 27.34% of the assets in the portfolio. You've got Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Tesla, Google, Berkshire Hathaway, Johnson & Johnson, and JP Morgan Chase. There are 508 holdings in this index fund. Next up, we have the Fidelity Total Market Index Fund, ticker symbol FSKAX. And unlike the S&P 500, this one has a little bit more broader of a perspective here. The Total Market Index Fund has a total of 3,532 holdings as of December 31st. It tracks the entire stock market. At least 80% of the assets and common stocks included in the Dow Jones US Total Stock Market Index, which is the performance of a broad range of stocks. 3,532 covers the big ones, the medium-sized stocks, and the small companies out there. The fund currently has a price per share of $109.09 per share, a $0 minimum initial contribution, and that same 0.015% expense ratio. Year to date, the fund is up 1.27%, the one year return 20.78, the three year return 14.41%, five year return 15.38%, and the 10 year return 13.74%. When we go down here and look at the actual assets in the fund, you're gonna see it's very similar to the S&P 500. You've got 22.33% of the portfolio made up of just the top 10 holdings. Even though there's 3,532 holdings, the top 10, just the top 10 make up almost a quarter of the total assets. You got the same top 10 here, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Tesla, Google, Berkshire Hathaway, Johnson & Johnson, and JP Morgan Chase. Third option we have available here is a different index to track, the NASDAQ Composite Index. You can track with a Fidelity Exchange Traded Fund. Fidelity's best holdings are definitely their indexed mutual funds. However, they do have a few ETFs, which is also an index fund in this case, the Fidelity Composite Index tracking stock, it's an ETF. Current price per share, $504.80. And this fund tracks the NASDAQ Composite Index, um, which is a collection of very tech heavy stocks. Not all tech, but definitely a larger majority of technology related companies. The net expense ratio for this specific ETF is 0.21%, so definitely a little bit higher than the other two. But you can see here that the performance of this ETF is epic. A $10,000 investment in um, 2010 would now be worth almost 70 
$1,000. We check out here the quarter end average annual returns, the one year return 44.94, the three year 24.76, the five year return 22.26%, 10 year return 18.42% and the life of the ETF return 12.97% as of September of 2003. If we look down here at the top 10 holdings, there are 1,000 holdings in the ETF, but the top 10 make up 44% of the total holdings. You've got very similar companies here. You've got Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Tesla, Google, again there's Google Class C and then Google Class A shares, NVIDIA Corporation, PayPal, and Comcast Corporation. Any of these three different holdings could be a great one fund portfolio. If you're looking for more diversification, you're probably gonna go with the total market. However, if you're looking for the highest returns of the three, you definitely wanna go with the NASDAQ Composite Index. Okay, Fidelity Index Fund Strategy number two is gonna be utilizing a small, mid, and large cap index fund. So the opportunity here is to take a look at both small size companies through a small cap index fund, medium sized companies through a specific fund, and then large cap funds. Um, the idea with the three different funds is that you might want to utilize a higher ratio of the smaller funds versus the larger versus, you know, with one of those one fund portfolios, you're getting just the large cap or primarily the heaviest weighting in the largest companies. With a small, mid, and large cap fund selection with three different funds, you can select more of the smaller companies or maybe a equal weighting between all three of them, say 33.33% for the large, medium, and small companies here. So for the large cap, we would utilize the Fidelity 500 Index Fund, which tracks the 500 largest companies. That's the one we already talked about, so we're not gonna talk about this one more. Then we have the Fidelity Mid Cap Index, which is FSMDX, Fidelity Mid Cap Index Fund. They have an expense ratio of 0.025% and a minimum initial investment of $0. If we scroll down here, we can see that the top 10 holdings make up 4.38% of the total portfolio, 825 holdings as of December 31st, and you can see the top holdings are Twilio, Twitter, IDEXX, Align Technology, Spotify, KLA Corporation, DocuSign, Lululemon, Synopsis, and Chipotle Mexican Grill. You can see the performance year to date is up 3.15%. The one year return is 17.11, three year return 11.6, five year return 13.4, and the lifetime return 14.08%. And for the Fidelity Small Cap Fund, we have the Fidelity Small Cap Index Fund, ticker symbol F. SSNX. And this fund has an expense ratio of 0.026%, a minimum initial investment of $0. And if we scroll down here, we can see up top here actually, the year to date return is up 7.53%. Small cap stocks have definitely had a resurgence here in the beginning part of January 2021. The one year return, we'll call it 20%, three year return, 10.36, five year return, 13.43, and the life of the fund is 13.58% return. You can see the small cap index fund has 2,050 different holdings in the uh, fund. The top 10 holdings make up 4.05% and you've got companies like Penn, National Gaming, Caesars Entertainment, Plug Power, Sunrun, Marathi Therapeutics, Darling Ingredients, Ultragenics, Pharma, Deckers Outdoor, IIVI and Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals. So like I said, if you're looking to get balance across all three sec uh, different types of capitalization in the uh, stock market, you can go with an equal weighting across each of these three, or you can weight yourself heavily more in medium or small cap funds. All right, index fund strategy number three here is gonna be utilizing Fidelity Zero index funds. Fidelity has four separate Fidelity Zero funds, and the reason why these funds are so special is because they have a 0% expense ratio. There is no cost to hold these funds. All right, the first Fidelity Zero fund you can take a look at here is the Fidelity Zero Total Market Index Fund. This is a play based off of the total market that Fidelity already has, FSKAX. They also have FZROX. It's got a 0% expense ratio. It was created in uh, August of 2018. It has a minimum initial contribution of $0. You can see, since it's so new, it only has a year-to-date return, a one-year return, and a lifetime return. So year-to-date up 1.19%, one-year return 20.5%, and the lifetime return 14.85%. So it's also a total market fund, and you can see here the top 10 holdings make up 22.71% of the portfolio. Same companies up here at the top. It's got 2,442 holdings. So it's got about 1,000 less holdings than the total market index fund, FSKAX. So if that's more important, you need to have that more broad diversification, then you can own the actual um, low cost 
F-S-K-A-X, but if you're looking for that zero expense ratio, then you can go ahead and own F-Z-R-O-X. Next up, we have the Fidelity Zero International Index Fund, F-Z-I-L-X. And the International Index Fund invests at least 80% of its assets into securities included in the Fidelity Global X-U-S Index and in Depository Receipts, representing securities included in the index. So it's all non-US companies here. You can see here the top 10 holdings make up 10.92%, and there are 2,126 holdings as of December 31st. You've got Alibaba, Tencent Holdings, Samsung, Taiwan, Nestle, Roach Holdings, Novartis, ASML, Toyota, and LVMH. You can see here the International Zero Fund is up 2.72% year to date, one year return 11.05%, and lifetime it's up 7.57%. Again, it's a fairly new fund at an inception date of August of 2018. So if you're looking to get foreign exposure in your portfolio, you can combine this potentially with a different Fidelity Zero Fund to capture the entire market or to get more balanced to your portfolio. Third zero fund we have here is the Fidelity Zero Large Cap Index Fund. This one is very similar to the Fidelity 500 Index Fund, but as long as they don't say S&P 500, they can pay a lot less money to the uh, Standard & Poor's with S&P, which is the one that owns the naming rights to the S&P 500. So instead, they just call it the Fidelity Zero Large Cap Index Fund. This fund has a 0% expense ratio, and it was created in September of 2018 and the minimum initial cost again, $0. The price per share, $13.49. It has a year-to-date return of 0.3%, one-year return is up 21.12%, lifetime up 15.19%. We scroll down here to see the portfolio. Again, it has 516 holdings, so just a few more companies than the S&P 500. It's a very similar portfolio here. The top 10 holdings in the fund make up 26.54% of the assets in the total portfolio. And then lastly, we have the Fidelity Zero Extended Market Index Fund, F-Z-I-P-X and this is an extended market. The goal of this fund is to capture the entire United States stock market with the exception of not including the 500 largest companies that are in the S&P 500. Year to date, this fund is up 6.34%, and the one year return is up 16.59%, lifetime 8.44%. Again, 0% expense ratio, zero minimum cost to invest. Top 10 holdings make up 5.81% of the total portfolio. Top 10 holdings, are Zoom, CrowdStrike, Match Group, Pinterest, Moderna, Teladoc, Etsy, Enphase Energy, Zillow Group, and Keurig Dr. Pepper. There are 1,928 holdings in this fund. So quite a bit of holdings here. Like I said, you can combine this specific zero fund with maybe the S&P 500 or that large cap a zero index fund to get a capture of the entire stock market or to give a little bit of a weighting to maybe the large or you maybe want to weight the extended market higher. You have that opportunity to own those two portfolios, uh, those two funds and actually do that weighting that you desire. All right, Fidelity Index Fund strategy number four here is gonna be utilizing Fidelity Freedom Funds, which is another way of saying target date funds, which is what Vanguard uses for their terms. So Fidelity Freedom Funds are target date funds which allocate their assets based on a specific target retirement year. For example, Fidelity Freedom 2020, Fidelity Freedom 2035, 2040, all the way up to 2065. So these target date funds, known as freedom funds, are meant for the investor who wants to be really hands-off. They don't want to manage their portfolio. They don't want to manage their asset allocation over time. They purely want to buy an investment now continue to contribute to that fund and just set it and forget it. And these funds are meant for that purpose. So if you were to own Fidelity 2065, you have a lot of time between now and then to invest, which means that the bulk of the assets are gonna be in stocks versus a very small amount, if any, in bonds. And over time, as you get closer and closer to your retirement age, the assets will then reallocate to be heavier weighted in the bonds and less in stocks. This gives you balance in your portfolio and it makes it easier for you to avoid any issues when you're close to retirement. You can see here that if you were to select the Freedom Fund 2055, then the asset allocation would be 54% in stocks and 36% in international stocks, 10% in bonds, and essentially a very small amount in short-term funds. But over time, as you get closer and closer to your retirement, you'll see here that in 2055, actually, well, let's go back here, we'll go halfway through, let's say 2042, then it'll be 40% stocks, 30% international stocks, 18% bonds. And then if we go a little bit later here, we've got 38% stocks, 24% international stocks, and 36% bonds. And then all the way into 2056, we've got 
2057, we'll call it 2056, 31% stocks, 21% international stocks, and 41% bonds. And then further into retirement, you can see that it's primarily in bonds as you go further and further along in uh, along the years. All right, Fidelity Index Fund Strategy here is gonna be utilizing Fidelity Growth Funds. Three different options here. We've got the Fidelity Large Cap, Mid Cap, and Small Cap Growth Funds. Let's walk through them one by one here. We've got the Fidelity Large Cap Growth Index Fund, FSPGX. Then we've got the Mid Cap Fund, FMDGX. And the Small Cap Fund, which is gonna be Fidelity Small Cap Growth, FECGX. Let's start with large cap. You can see here that it's a large cap growth fund. It's got an expense ratio of 0.035%. All three funds have a zero minimum to invest. You can see here down here, the holdings in the top in the large cap growth are 456 holdings. Top 10 holdings though make up 44.2% of the total portfolio. We've got Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Tesla, Google, Visa, MasterCard, and Nvidia. Growth companies that are still large companies. You can see here year to date, the fund is actually down 1.14% and the one-year return is up 38%, three-year return is up 22.9, lifetime return 22.47%, with an inception date of June 2016. Then we've got the mid-cap fund, FMDGX. Mid-cap growth fund has an expense ratio of 0.05%, and it's up year-to-date 2.2%, with a one-year return of 34%, and a lifetime return of 26.55%. Again, this fund was created in July of 2019, so still relatively new. As we scroll into the holdings, we can see that there are 349 holdings as of December 31st, and the top 10 holdings up here make up 11.71% of the total portfolio. We've got IDEXX, Align Technology, Spotify, KLA Corporation, DocuSign, Lululemon, Twilio, Chipotle, Cadence Design, and Viva Systems. And then we can see here, we've got the Fidelity Small Cap Growth which is up year to date 7.27%, a one year return of 34.4, and a lifetime return of 27.9%. This fund has an expense ratio of 0.05% and a price per share of $30.41. If we scroll down here to the portfolio, we can see that the total holdings is 1,129 companies. The top 10 holdings though make up 6.66% of the portfolio. Top 10 holdings are Plug Power, Sunrun, Marathi Therapeutics, Ultragenics, Decker's Outdoor, Caesar Entertainment, Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals, Churchill Downs, Natera, and RH. So depending on your risk profile here, you could utilize an equal weighting in the large, mid, and small cap funds here if you'd like, or if you prefer to have a heavier weighting in any one of them, you can do that. You can go 40% and then 30 and 30 in the other two, or you could, whatever one you prefer to weight yourself in, you can do that here. So this is another index fund strategy you can use. All right, the sixth Fidelity index fund strategy we're gonna look at here is the Fidelity 4-in-1 fund here, which is FFNOX. You should think of this as kind of like a balanced fund. It's a four in one fund though. Let's start by looking at the actual composition here. We go down here to composition um, and let's click over here. We can see that currently it's made up of four different funds. The Fidelity 500 index fund, which we've already talked about. The Fidelity Extended Market Index Fund, which as we've already talked about, is the mid-size and small size companies in the stock market here. And then we've got Fidelity International and Fidelity US Bond Market. So this fund is weighted 60% in United States equities or stocks, 25% in international equities, and then 14.4% in investment grade bonds, which is the Fidelity US Bond Index Fund. You get more of a balanced approach this way. The uh, growth upward is more smooth because you don't have a lot of the larger dips that you would see if all of your investments were in stocks. You can see that this fund has an expense ratio of 0.13%, the net expense ratio 0.11%. It's got a price per share currently of $55.98, a minimum to invest of $0. And then year to date, the, the fund is up 1.14%. The one year return is 16%, three year return is 10.7, five year return 11.9, and 10 year return 10.24%. So this might be a great option for somebody that is looking for a more balanced approach there maybe a little bit more risk averse. They don't want large dips in the stock market, or maybe they want to have some risk in the portfolio. They want to have some stock market exposure, but they also want to balance that with bonds and international equities. 
This can be a great option just to have one fund in the portfolio and it'd be a balanced approach. All right guys, so there you have it. Six different Fidelity Index Fund strategies for the average Joe out there. I promise you, one of these is great for you depending on your risk profile, depending on how much time you have left until retirement. One of these six index fund strategies with Fidelity is gonna be a great fit for you. If you haven't done it yet, make sure you leave your two cents in the comments below and hit that subscribe button to join the Average Joe Investing Community where we talk about all things investing, dividend stocks, index funds with Vanguard and Fidelity and everything in between. That's all I got for you guys. Have a great rest of your day and please continue to stay healthy both physically and financially. Have a good one.